Okay, uh, good evening everyone again. This is North Crossroads. I'll be your uh, teacher today. Uh, you are going to listen to the class about solo PvP and specifically about Navy frigates and how they are used in PvP. Uh, first, uh, several simple rules. Please keep comms clear. Uh, if you have any questions, drop them into chat.uni channel. And I'll make uh, several stops and will answer your questions. But feel free to drop them um, as soon as you have them. When I'll finish talking, I will have a small Q&A session. If you will have any more questions, then you will be able to ask questions in voice. And uh, questions like, check this fit, is it fit any good? I would suggest to keep to the end of the class, uh, just because it's... Uh, often takes uh, some time to answer the question or discuss it and uh, I would like to keep it in the, in the end so we will not break uh, the class apart. Sorry for my English, it's not my first language of course so it's not perfect so don't be surprised by some uh, strange word, word combinations. Anyway, um, now after the class, if we will have enough people willing to, uh, we will probably have a uh, practical in Aldred, but it will heavily depend on people. Uh, either people want it or not. Uh, I'm not sure that I will be able to participate, but I strongly recommend you to try uh, to fight either in Navy Frigate or against Navy Frigates. Okay, then let's start. Uh, today we will talk about Navy Frigates. So, Navy Frigates. Uh, basically, Navy Frigates is more, um, is better type of T1 Frigate. It is often positioned as an uh, intermediate level between T1 and T2 Frigates. And they are, of course, all combat ones. There are no, uh, like, E-War Navy Frigates. Usually, they have more tank, more DPS, uh, more speed than their T1 counterparts and often can fight uh, even T2 uh, frigates, but it heavily depends on the enemy and the fit that a uh, navy frigate chooses. Uh, comparing to the faction frigates, uh, which you might have heard of, uh, pirate faction frigates, usually they are considered uh, inferior. So, but it doesn't mean that you can kill them, it's just that usually it's uh, harder to kill them. Um, now let's talk about uh, advantages of Navy Frigates. General, not only for solo PvP, but for any type of PvP or even PvE. Uh, usually, uh, Navy Frigate uh, has more in the strength uh, than its T1 counterpart, but his strength will be simil similar. Uh, for example, Kaldari T1 Frigate Merlin has 4 mid slots, uh, Navy Frigate, um, which is uh, Hookbill, have 5 mid slots. Uh, another example, um, Republic Fleet Firetail has uh, bigger speed than Rift does than the Rifter has, sorry. Uh, so, basically, uh, what is Navy Frigate? You take a T1 Frig, and then boost it a little, and you'll get a Navy version of it. Another um, advantage, uh, comparing now to uh, T2 Frigates, is that to fly a Navy Frigate, you do not need uh, Frigates at 5. You can fly it uh, with 3, with 4 skill in Frigates, but, well, of course, I would strongly recommend having it at least at 4. And if you have Frigates 5, for example, uh, with Navy Frigate, you will get all the bonuses from uh, from Assault Frigate. You'll have to train another line of skills. And, well, Assault Frigate 5 is a pretty long uh, skill to train. So usually people have it at 4, which means they don't have all the bonuses that this hull gives which 
again mean that navy frigates have a little advantage in this uh, part too. So the main weakness uh, comparing to uh, T2 frigates is that the uh, resist profile is similar to the T1 frigates. Uh, for example, if um, let's take a, a Jaguar has uh, uh, resists uh, for shields uh, 75 EM damage, then if you look at Republic Fleet Firetail, you will notice that it has, well, zero EM damage resists. And uh, all other resists, for example, on assault frigates and on interceptors, are better than on pure T1 boats. Uh, interceptors have a little less advantage because they have a pretty small um, bonus to resist, but they do have them. And assault frigates are just crazy regarding resists to their opposite faction, uh, which usually means that T2 frigates, especially assault frigates, will have more HP than you will have. In its turn, it means that you will have to fight smart against them. Not that you cannot defeat them, but you have to think, you have need to have solid fit for your frigate, and you need to uh, use that fit efficiently. So, of course, there are four navy frigates, one for each faction, or one for each main race. I would probably really want to see a navy frigate for our fifth race, but unfortunately it's not possible. So, uh, for Kaldari it's Kaldari Navy Hugdal, for Minotaur it's Republic Fleet Firetail, for Amar it's Imperial Navy Slicer, and for Galente it's Federation Navy Comet. So, what can you fight in these things? Uh, and I will talk about solo fights, of course. Um, in th at least in this class. Uh, basically, you can fight everything up to, well, cruiser. You can kill almost any t uh, almost any frigate T1, and you probably will be able to kill a lot of T2 frigates. T1 and T2 cruisers, well, probably, but it will heavily depends on the fit and the experience of your enemy. For example, you will probably have a lot of problems killing an armor tanked rupture but uh, if you will able to um, catch for example an omen you will probably be able to uh, kill it uh, if you are playing smart in fleet uh, in sorry in class chat i have linked a uh, link to the google doc with uh, some general fittings about uh, with some general fittings uh, of uh, navy frigates, we will discuss each of it uh, individually, and I will try to describe why it is fit that way, and how do you, how should you fly it, and what are the strengths and weaknesses of the hull itself. Uh, Holy Erica asks: Dest Destroyers are in frig range. Well, after the recent mm, buff. Destroyers are kind of hard to fight in any frigate, and it will heavily depend on whether you are able to play on um, destroyer's weaknesses and on your strengths. So it more comes down to um, pilot more than uh, to the ship itself. So if you will be able to dictate our engagement, Probably you will be able to win. I will specifically point out uh, the ships and fits that will that are better in killing destroyers. Uh, but even in this case, uh, well, you need to be uh, careful and play smart. For example, during the last two weeks, I've killed I think two or three destroyers in uh, frigate hulls. Uh, I was flying my Jaguar, but uh, it would change nothing if I would fly, for example, a fire tail. Uh, so it is possible, but, well, that's why you are listening to this class, I guess. So everyone, please open the link. By the way, you are free to save this link and use it uh, as long as you need it, or copy it and save 
elsewhere. Uh, it's not something uh, really secret. So go ahead and use it uh, for your advantages. Okay, first one is a fire tail, a Republic Fleet fire tail. I would probably say that Republic Fleet fire tail is the uh, weakest of the uh, Navy frigates, um, mostly because it doesn't have a lot of um, advantages over the Rifter. Basically, many people consider fire tail as a Rifter with one more mid slot, but in such layout comes. Uh, well, strength of the fire tail, because four mid slots allow you a lot of different things in there. You can, uh, similar to uh, Rifter, you can shield tank it, you can armor tank it, you can uh, dual rep tank it. It's up to you. Basically, if you will uh, see info of the fire tail, then you will see that uh, it has 20% bonus to uh, turret damage. Uh, basically, it means that uh, fire tail can fit only two guns and not uh, three like uh, the Rifter. But uh, based on the bonus, you can see that effect effectively you will have four turrets at level five. But in this ship, um, at level four, as you can understand, you are losing half of a turret. So it's I would say that it's a lot of DPS. That's why I would really suggest getting, um, if you are going to fly a Navy Frigate, getting a Frigate skill to level 5, because uh, a lot of bonuses are very big, like 20%. Um, you will not find such a bonus on any regular hull. So each level um, costs a lot and on the Republic Fleet Fire Tail especially. And you see a 7.5% bonus to tour tracking. It's similar as a Rifter has. Uh, so it's nice, of course. And it allows you to fit a Fire Tail both as a Kaita and as a Brawler. Um, there are several uh, Usually, usual fits for fire tail. I'll uh, link. I've posted two of them. First one is a dual wrapper setup. Uh, mostly, I took only two of them because uh, Republic Fleet fire tail um, is kind of well. People will expect it to be fit similar to the Rifter. That's why I've concentrated, tried to put a couple of fits uh, that look uh, a little bit a little bit different. So uh, first fit is dual rep fit, which means that you can uh, tank pretty big amount of damage. Uh, and uh, how are you going to fly this ship? Uh, you will orbit close. Uh, bonus to tracking usually means that if you are close to an, an enemy, uh, you should be, uh, you should have as high uh, transversal and angular velocity as only possible, because usually you will out track them. If you out track them, then well, probably you will out DPS them. In this case, uh, it's all you need. So uh, if you can out, but uh, dual represent. Uh, not rift a fire tail, sorry, is a little bit different because with two wrappers uh, you can concentrate on dealing as uh, much damage as you want and still be able to uh, tank uh, your opponent. So let's uh, get down to the high slots is 150 millimeters auto cannons. With such a nice bonus to tracking, you can fit uh, gu uh, guns of uh, bigger caliber. So 150 or 200 are usual choices. Because, for example, on a Jaguar, I would prefer to see 125 millimeter guns because it has no uh, tracking bonus. Uh, since we have a capacitor booster, we do not need a NOS in high, so we enhance our DPS with a rocket launcher. Then mids. Uh, mids, of course, is a, often a key to uh, any ship because it allows a lot of different options. 
here we can see that, uh, well, trio that I al almost always are in MIBS, uh, Scrum, Web, and Afterburner. It's a fit, of course, for low sec. For zero zero, will, you will most likely, but not often, but most likely, will want to have an MVD installed and a small capacitor booster. Uh, here, I don't know why, but I've made a mistake in a fit. It should carry not 400, but 200, nay, 200 boosters. Why 200? Because if you check the stats of the Firetail itself, you'll see that it has a poor capacitor. Uh, its capacitor is similar to Rifter ones, and without, with, uh, zero skills, it is 250. With skills, it's somewhat bigger, but still, it's not very good for a capacitor. So you will not often see a neutralizer, for, for example, in a high slot, uh, and almost always you will see a NOS. So if you will you if we will use 400 charges, uh, we will just waste cap injected. Uh, we will waste around 100 cap, and Navy Cut Booster allowed to fit two of them in uh, a capacitor booster without recharging, and it will give us a steady uh, stream of income uh, to run both our wrappers. Uh, low slots are kinda, well, obvious. <laughs> Dual wraps and the damage control. And the rigs, uh, it's often seen on um, uh, setups that active tank and that concentrate on active tanking uh, resist modules instead of um, buffer modules. So instead of trimarks or any other modules, uh, you can see it has kinetic, anti-kinetic, anti-explosive and anti-thermic pumps. It it brings basically resists of a uh, fire tail into a pretty decent level, um, more than 50, I think, for each uh, of the resist type, and usually it's enough, uh, well, against most targets. This fit is not very high DPS, but it does a job. I've tried this fit against a uh, thresher, and I've pimped it a little, so put C-type armor wrappers, and unfortunately it didn't work. It was a close fight, uh, like he was in deep hull uh, when I exploded, but um, unfortunately I wasn't able to kill it. But it doesn't mean that you uh, can do it just, uh, well, you can have a uh, um, uh, pilot that has not a lot of scales, etc. In this case, you might be able to kill it uh, in Thresher, uh, but I would not advise you to engage um, distress in this fit unless they are artillery, artillery fit, long range fit. Um, in this case, orbiting will will save your ass, and you will just uh, kill him easily. Next is probably the most used file to fire tail uh, fit. Uh, it's a kiting fire tail. Looking at the uh, bonus hulls, you can remember that we have 7.5 bonus to tracking, and it's very nice not only for orbiting close, but also it's very nice to use on artilleries, because uh, it allows you to, well, shoot and hit people, even uh, when they are pretty close to you, like 8 or 9 kilometers. So, as you can see, uh, in high slots we have two artilleries and rocket launcher. Uh, rocket with decent skills will hit at around 9 kilometers, so it's enough. In mid slots we have uh, afterburner, scrambler, and then we have dual webs. Why do we need dual webs? It's because we need that our opponent, our target, uh, do not come close to us. So by having one more web, we making we are making sure that we will dictate the range of the engagement. A lot of 
ships, a lot of PvP solo, solo PvP frigates will fit Afterburner, Scram and the web. Uh, but in case uh, if you are fighting uh, with these three modules against such a Firetail, it will not work because uh, Firetail will have one more web. Um, though you can switch that web for example for a TD, a tracking disruptor, um, and try to kite in it. Um, and or at least not kite but stay outside of his gun range and uh, well in such a setup you will probably be able to kill a now token thrasher so again or most other um, destroyers for so if you will switch one uh, web for a tracking disruptor set to optimal range you will probably be able to kill a destroyer so lows are a damage control unit, uh, but due to uh, some CPU problems, it's a, a meta one. It's not very expensive, uh, but uh, it will cost you around, I think, a million, a million and a half. A gyro stabilizer to increase your damage, and a small armor wrapper just to keep you alive against the drones. But feel free to drop it. Um, for any other module that you like, because uh, in this fit, uh, and Firetail usually have a bad capacitor, and running well, well all four mid slots can get you um, quickly, pretty quickly out of cap. But this uh, armor wrapper is more for patching up, so it's not to run indefinitely. It's just for a couple of pulses to keep you alive, but you can switch for something that you like more. In the rigs we have a burst rig, uh, which is damage rig, range rig, and a rig that will uh, close your explosive hull. Many uh, drone boats or uh, frigates that carry, can carry drones carry uh, warriors, which do explosive damage, and since we are T1 frigate, T1 resists, explosive will hit you very hard into your, straight into your armor. Um, now, how to fly the ship? Um, basically, um, I would say that you should allow enemy to engage, then turn on your all of your mid slots, and then keep him at range of 8-9 kilometers. Usually it will be out of his gun range, uh, the main thing you need to do is to keep him inside your scram range, but outside of his guns, or at least in deep fall off of his guns. It's pretty easy when you um, try it, and it's pretty easy to win fights in it, but of course, as you can understand, um, you will have problems fighting um, rocket frigates, because you don't have a lot of tank, and, uh, well, rocket frigates don't give a damn uh, whether you are at 8 kilometers or 9 kilometers as long as they can hit you. They will, uh, uh, as long as your missiles, uh, his missiles or rockets can reach you, he will hit you at his, well, calculated but uh, full damage. In this case, uh, you have a very, very thin uh, range. Uh, where probably rockets will not hit you. It's outside 9 kilometers, but still inside the scram range. So you can keep your scram overheated all the time and try to keep him in that range. A good rocket pilot uh, will switch to long range rockets, javelins, I think they're named, and will still hit you, but with a lot, lot reduced DPS so you might be able to still win the fight. But be careful. Usually, be careful against the rocket frigates. Uh, Febbing asks, is Ambitrig better for this fit? I would have thought you'd go for Locus with Artis. Uh, well, it depends on the uh, range you are engaging. Locus will probably increase your DPS around 7 kilometer. 
uh, range, but usually you will want to stay at 8 or 9 kilometers away. So, and in this case, uh, having better fall off, uh, because fall off will have a bigger bonus, probably is better. But I encourage you to check, well, DPS graphs on uh, EFT or PIFA. Might be that locus will work better. But uh, another small advantage of NB trig is that if your target is flashy, uh, you can engage it from bigger range. Sometimes it helps. Okay, any other questions uh, about Firetail? It's uh, of course it's a fun ship to fly, but um, and uh, a lot of well, not a lot, but some people fly it and enjoy it. Uh, I personally have several of them with different fits. I would probably name that uh, there is a pretty popular uh, sh uh, fit with medium shield extender and tracking disruptor. So, uh, well, medium shield extender and then um, uh, trio, usually trio, like afterburner, scram and web. And another uh, is uh, having as a fourth uh, module in mid slots, a tracking disruptor set to tracking speed and orbiting close. Well, it might get you uh, a lot of kills. Another popular choice is, um, well, basically armor rift on steroids, uh, which means 100 millimeter plate, uh, damage control, and small armor wrapper in lows and in mids. You use um, well whatever pr pretty much you want, but three modules from the rifter, and then for example a small capacitor booster and a neutralizer in highs. Uh, kind of unusual, but it might work depending on your uh, skills and wishes. Uh, Nair Aldro asks: Is in a cookie cutter rifter vs fire tail fight would the tracking disruptor be best for the first mid slot? Well, it really depends how the fight will go. Uh, I would say that not all cookie cut uh, by cookie cutter. I guess you mean uh, armor uh, tanking or rifter. Um, they both have uh, bonus to tracking. So probably if you have a tracking disruptor, it will come down to the uh, gun's caliber, uh, whether he is flashy and you can engage him uh, from afar with barrage loaded. Uh, but basically I would say that a tracking disruptor might be a good idea. But not only tracking disruptor matters. Uh, for example, if he will try to kite him by himself, and at not that uh, very high um, range, like one kilometer, and well, not kite, but uh, try not to orbit you. Um, well, tracking will not matter that much, but well, try it. I would say, but it's in this case, I would say that it all comes down to a pilot skill. Okay, now uh, let's get at. Uh, to the next one, uh, which is Imperial Navy Slicer. It's an Amar ship. Uh, if anyone can link it. Uh, how would you rate the Artifact Tail against a similar jack fit? Fabing asks. Well, Jaguar doesn't have a bonus to tracking. So I would say that um, usually I would prefer a Fire Tail. But again, it uh, often comes down to uh, what are the uh, engagement conditions. Okay, so if you check Imperial, Na Imperial Navy Slicer, uh, you see that you have two bonuses, one for optimal range and second for damage. And it's 25% to uh, energy damage, uh, to laser damage, which means that, well, each level of the relevant skin skill will count greatly. Navy Slicer is probably one of my favorite frigates. And as we've checked its bonuses, we can see that, uh, it's pretty natural, uh, as a ship. 
And now I have a small, uh, well, uh, question for you guys. Whoever will tell me a uh, usual uh, range of the pulse fitted slicer with scotch ammo. Uh, first, we'll get another slicer for himself right now. Answer in class. <laughs> okay. Uh, the answer is uh, without any uh, module that enhance it. It's uh, 60 kilometers um, optimal plus uh, 2 kilometers, 2.3 kilometers fall off, which gives us around 80, 80.5. So, uh, Kinis was the closest one and he just got himself a free Navy slicer. So, yes, it's around 18 kilometers. Um, with, usually it is fit with at least uh, some, uh, some module that enhance it, uh, tracking and, uh, and its uh, range. So usually it's more like 20 or even sometimes even uh, more. Take a look on two fits that I've linked. Uh, to make it's an effective kiter. Uh, usually it requires, so it requires at least some level of uh, good skills, uh, and I mean skills by uh, not pilot skills, but by trained skills. And well, often it's uh, it use cheap uh, but still um, faction items. Let's take a look on first one. Usually, Navy Slicer is uh, fits uh, medium pulse lasers with scorch loaded. Uh, then, as you can see in mid slots, we have uh, MVD and the uh, Word Disruptor. In low slots, we have two heat sinks to increase our uh, DPS. A damage control unit, small armor wrapper, and a co-processor to fit all of these <coughs> things. In rigs, we have two uh, en rigs enhancing our range again. So, uh, how do you fly, fly uh, a kiting boat? Uh, but probably a little bit later about that. Several things that uh, you must probably know specifically. Why? Meta uh, armor wrapper because T21 doesn't fit, <laughs> basically, and uh, it's a very tight fit. How can you downgrade it? You can instead of one uh, heatsink put a tracking enhancer, for example, and in this case you can switch uh, the damage control unit that is Meta 4 and that's pretty expensive one. You can switch it to uh, usual T2 or T1 uh, damage control, up to you basically. And in this case you will have a lot cheaper cheaper fit to do. But if you want to be, uh, to have the most DPS, probably that's your fit. And now, second fit is, well, kinda like a little bit easier to fit. You have pulse lasers in highs, salvager should be offline, of course. In uh, mid slots we have a cheap faction MDD. Uh, B-type is really cheap and it's great for two things. Uh, first, it uh, ha has a smaller capacitor problems. Uh, it means that uh, the reduction of overall capacitor is slower, uh, smaller than any T1 or T2. Uh, and the second module in mid is a war disruptor, a 2, because, well, uh, it has increased range over the um, T1 that was on the first, first fit, and it means that you can stay uh, more away from the, your enemy and have uh, less problems keeping your range away and uh, well it basically it means that you can be um, at bigger rain, range from your enemy and it's easier to control uh, his uh, tries to get close to you and or uh, get away from you because on T1 of course you have 
range of 20 with 24 overheated and 22 you have 24 with 28 overheated. In low slots we have a damage control unit, two overdrives injectors uh, to, well, have better speed because um, Navy frigates usually are not that speedy, at least they have smaller speeds than uh, interceptors, for example, so it might help. And two, two tracking enhancers uh, to support your T2 uh, warp disruptor. Uh, it allows you to shoot, I think, at around 24 kilometers. In rigs, we have a uh, low friction one uh, for agility, for uh, turning a little bit quicker, a damage rig, and a rig that increases your overall capacitor amount. Basically, it's there, uh, so you would be able to uh, run your MVD for a little bit more than usually. Now, uh, as you can see, uh, both of these fits are pretty much glass cannons. Yes, first one can uh, tank <laughs> for some time, but it's not uh, very good and I, it's not a tank that I would call very good. Uh, it basically allows you to live long enough <laughs> to kill your opponent, but since you are, sh you should be kiting, and it doesn't matter because usually you will not have to take damage anyhow. That's why uh, second fit uh, has almost no tank and its only tank is damage control unit. So, how do you fly it? Uh, basically, you orbit your enemy at 20 kilometers, or in case of the second fit, you will orbit at 22, for example, and just, well, shoot at them. Uh, I would say that Imperial Navy Slicer is one of the ships that is able to uh, kill a Thresher, well, pretty surely, um, to kill any destroyer. Sorry that I'm always uh, saying Thresher because, well, it's 90% of the time that you see only them. So, uh, while staying at 20 kilometers, you can be sure that you will kill a Thresher if you will fly uh, your ship accordingly. I would say that for people that are in low sec camp, if you want to fly a frigate that is able to catch up and kill destroyers that uh, space police often flies, it's a very good ship. But of course, uh, we are talking about uh, auto cannon destroyers. If uh, they are artillery fit, then you need to get close and orbit at close distance, which, uh, well, sometimes might be a problem. Well. Probably you might ask that yourself that why there's no uh, close range fits. I would say that there are. They are not often used, uh, mostly because, uh, well, <laughs> Navy Slicer doesn't have uh, uh, mid slots to support its short range tackling capabilities. It's always very hard to fight in a frigate that has only two mid slots. Usually one of them is propulsion mode and second one is a scrambler. So if your enemy have, um, for example, web uh, added to this, these two, then he will be able to control the range of the fight and most likely he will either not engage you or if he will engage you, he will be able to disengage on his own will. That's why uh, it's up to you to develop one, but I wouldn't really advise you to fly because, uh, well, it's somewhat uh, like a Punisher if we are talking about the amount of mid slots, but uh, it's a lot more expensive Punisher, uh, so I wouldn't recommend one, though you can try, of course. How to kill? A kiting Imperial Navy Slicer. A good Slicer pilot will um, fit an MVD, not afterburner, and will kite you from pretty f uh, big range. If you have an afterburner, not an MVD, 
uh, I would say that uh, you have you need to have a scrum or at least a web. In other cases, you will not be able to fight uh, this ship. You need to close in very fast and put your scram and web on him as as fast as you can. But if you are not able to do it in the first few seconds, most likely, if you don't have any help, you will die. Because uh, with an afterburner, it's pretty hard to get within uh, 13 kilometers and tackle that uh, orbiting slicer. If you have an MVD, uh, well, the task becomes much more easier because, uh, well, mostly uh, what you need is to burn straight at him, get in close. Uh, well, have, having scram is still preferable, or at least a web. And then orbit him. Why orbiting? Because, um, well, uh, Imperial Navy Slicer with uh, medium pulse laser doesn't have a really great tracking. And if it doesn't have like two tracking, uh, even with two tracking enhancers, if you check uh, the second fit in EFT, you will see that uh, tracking is uh, with all level 5 is uh, 0 0.27, which is not a lot. Uh, so you can out-track out the ship pretty easily. Probably you will want to shoot at his resist hole, uh, which is uh, ex uh, explosive, of course. And, well, I must say that not many people plug that hole in uh, Slicer, because if it's at Kaita, it shouldn't get damaged at all. So, uh, basic, I would say that basic rule, uh, if you've caught the Slicer, you will probably be able to kill it. Also, in the end, I will probably say that uh, Imperial Navy Slicer if, is one of the ships that is pretty famous for being able to kill Dremels, at least uh, in Nullsec. Okay, any questions about Imperial Navy Slicer? Uh, the thing I would add probably is that um, there is a T2 uh, frigate which somewhat resembles Navy Slicer. It's a Crusader, a Mar Interceptor. It's often fit as a kiting ship, but uh, usually Navy Slicer is better because it has a better range. Also, um, Navy Slicer can be as good uh, as a sniper as a dedicated T2 uh, frigate, T2 sniping frigate, uh, which is uh, well, which is which is uh, retribution, I think. Uh, okay, Silex asks. So, if you're using auto cannons against a slicer, use barrage. Uh, Silex. Well, I would say that no, because um, usually, usually auto cannons with the barrage will shoot up to well nine, ten kilometers max. If the hull is not not bonus to it, like the wolf. Uh, and you will first, you will need to get close to the slicer to at least hit it, because uh, a slicer will stay uh, from 18 to 22 kilometers away from you, orbiting you with MBD on, usually. It means that you really need to uh, get into his range and then orbit him pretty close, which means that barrage would be a bad option, usually. Uh, Nair asks, which ships can reliably break away from a slicer point and how? Uh, I would say that any ship that have an uh, MVD can do it. Um, usually, uh, this tactic is called um, slingshotting. First, uh, well, basically, uh, you can do almost the same thing for uh, get into get into close to a slicer and get away from it. To get away from it, first you try to burn towards him. Uh, he will have to turn and burn away from you. Then, uh, when your cycle will almost end, uh, your MVD cycle, you manually um, align to any celestial that you want to warp away. So you need that celestial to be 
uh, in the direction opposite from uh, where you were burning at first. Then you overheat your MVD and burn to, uh, to this um, celestial and spam warp, basically. So it's pretty easy. You uh, burn towards your target. Then he, when he will, uh, you see that he will burn away from you, you turn around 180 uh, degrees, overheat your MVD and burn away. Usually on uh, MVD speeds it will get you away from him uh, outside of his uh, disruptor range. But if he is good, of course, uh, he can manual, manually pilot and well, that's how uh, good Kaita um, will probably still kill you. So that's how good Kaita's pilot. They not only use orbit button, but also use manual piloting. Uh, Stone Cunning asks, would it be a terrible idea to use a scram, fit for more speed and switch to the short range to two crystals? Or is that a fitting issue? Well, it's not a fitting issue. Uh, I would say that biggest issue at uh, short range against uh, um, impe uh, was in Imperial Navy Slicer is its tracking. So you need to be uh, pretty much away from your enemy. Uh, especially if you are um, within web and scrap range, uh, you will not really dictate the range. So yes, Slicer is very good because it, uh, if even if it was uh, caught, you can easily switch to short range uh, multi frequency crystals and instantly and do a lot of DPS or even finish your uh, enemy with them. But if your enemy will catch you fast, pretty fast, and will be able to uh, orbit close to you, uh, most likely uh, this advantage of instant switching of your ammo will not really help. Nair, without MVD, he has to make a mistake. Well, yes. Probably I would say that uh, you are correct. Not that it's totally impossible uh, if he will use only uh, orbit or if he will use a uh, keep at range uh, even with afterburner you might be able to get him and for example if uh, you are flying a Dremel then your overheated afterburner can um, well your speed will be probably <laughs> equal to the speed of MVD Navy Slicer but for usual ships like um, well I don't know or Rifters or uh, Jaguar or any other um, not, uh, well, average um, speed ship, you will be able to kill him easily. Uh, Stow Cunning, yes, but if you scram them and disable NVD, would that not help with the tracking? Yes, it would. Uh, but only if he has only, if your enemy has only uh, NVD and the scram. If he has, for example, MVD scram and web or afterburner and the scram he will get into the range pretty fast and well at this moment you are more or less toast okay so if uh, no more questions about navy slices uh, let's get to the next one Kaldari navy hookbell I would say that it's a very very good ship to be honest I would struggle um, if I would be asked to name the best Navy uh, frigate, I would probably struggle between a Hookbell and an Imperial Navy Slicer. Uh, I've posted two most used, I think, fits, uh, especially nowadays when there are a lot of uh, Threshers and other destroyers. Probably we'll start uh, bar from the second fit. Uh, it was shamelessly stolen from Melfurian Killmail, uh, sorry, Lost Mail, <laughs> uh, but it's still a very, very good ship. Let's discuss it a little. Uh, in high slots uh, rocket launchers, uh, usually you will see that uh, Hungbills fit rockets. I've heard uh, about uh, kiting uh, Hungbills. 
that fits standard missile launchers instead of rockets, but uh, unfortunately it's, they are usually not very good because they have uh, big problems with fitting guns and all other modules um, while having standard missiles. Uh, so it's, it's not impossible, you, I encourage you to try it, uh, but usually uh, you are expected to be a rocket fit. Um, next, in uh, mid slots, well, Hookbill is very famous for its number of mid, mid slots. It's one of the few frigates that have five of them. So, um, and people, well, not that there are a lot of types of uh, fitting them, uh, but there are some. Uh, so, it's a medium shield extender, afterburner, scram, and dual webs in mid slots. In low slots, as you can see, it's a, a damage control unit and a ballistic control system. Uh, how this setup flies? Basically, with afterburner scram and two webs, you are able to control the range of the of any fight that uh, takes place in within scram range. You are very good at it. Uh, this fit is very good at it. So if you see that your enemy has poor tracking, for example, like uh, fitting uh, big guns, uh, and your and hull is not uh, bonused for tracking, you can orbit close. Uh, with two webs, you will be able to get in close, orbit close, and well, sh uh, kill him. If you see that uh, he is flying small caliber guns and wants to out track you, or wants to uh, get close to you, uh, you just need to uh, put again everything, all mids on him, and stay outside of his gun range, or at least stay at. Um, in his fall off. In this case, uh, you will out DPS him because uh, you this navy, sorry, this navy frigate is uh, rocket fit, and as you probably all know, a rocket damage doesn't really uh, depends on tracking. It depends only on uh, signature radius and on uh, speed of your target. Uh, probably I would say that the speed is the most important one. So, and since you have scrambler and two webs, I assure the you, I assure you that uh, speed of the of your enemy will not be really high. I would say that it will be pretty low. And in turn, it means that uh, you will be able to hit him for almost full your damage. Probably, I would say, I need to say that uh, Hugbill is not a very high DPS uh, ship, for example, comparing to, uh, well, Navy Slicer or um, Navy Comet. But it's still, uh, so expect your fights to last, well, uh, at least some time, uh, because you will kill the target, but you will do it pretty slowly. We forgot to check the uh, bonuses to the hull, and they are 10% to missile velocity, which means that your missiles will shoot uh, at bigger ranges, and 20% uh, to uh, damage of kinetic, kinetic um, missiles, and 10% damage to all other uh, damage types. I would still suggest to uh, sh use kinetic, uh, usually rockets, though if you are fighting against, for example, a um, ship that has have very high uh, kinetic resists, like for example um, Galenti or uh, Kaldari T2 uh, frigates, they usually have um, pretty high uh, kinetic resists. I would say that you can feel free to switch to the needed uh, damage type like uh, EM or explosive. I think against the uh, Galente they are pretty pretty good. So in this fit uh, I would say that you can kill almost any short range uh, enemy unless it has uh, really good bonuses like well for example Dremiel 
you will probably have a hard time killing it in uh, such fitted hook bill. But for Dremel uh, and for destroyers, uh, I've linked, uh, I've uh, well, posted in Google Doc another fit, uh, which is armor tanked Caldera Neri hook bill. Uh, mid slot that are freed from medium shield extender you use for uh, tracking disruptor. What it means uh, is that uh, you usually can um, stay at range like 8 or 9 kilometers away from him while tracking disrupting him uh, on optimal range disruption and well he will do no damage for, to you and you will slowly but surely will kill him. Of course, if you are fighting, for example, against uh, Dremiel, you must remember that uh, Dremiel have three drones, so it will be a somewhat race uh, whether he will be able to kill you first or with his three drones, or you will be able to kill him with your not very high DPS. In this fit, you can see that it has a meta 4 tracking disruptor, but feel free to downgrade it a little, uh, because meta 4 ones are pretty expensive. Everything else is, well, is not that expensive, and uh, your ship will probably cost around 30 million ISK. Also, uh, I would say that um, Navy hook build with dual um, dual webs is one of the uh, few ships that are worth uh, fitting with uh, range range rockets with short range T2 rocket due to uh, bonuses of to the velocity and uh, because two webs almost always uh, make sure that your that enemy speed is pretty low. Uh, okay, any questions about the hook bill? Okay, uh, seems like not a lot of questions uh, about the hook bill, uh, but I strongly, if you are a Caldari pilot and think uh, what ship to fly, I strongly encourage you to try out the hook bill. You will, well, love it, because it's really great for solo PvP. And uh, the last, but not, uh, well, but still good frigate is a Galente one, Federation Navy Comet. Um, this ship is often considered a, well, preparing stage or preparing ship before flying a Daredevil. As you can understand, uh, this ship is a lot cheaper than a Daredevil, like three or four times. So, um, well, it's a really, n and it looks pretty nice, I think, after the Crucible expansion, and it can do a lot of things pretty good. If you uh, check the stats, you will see that it has a 7.5 bonus to tracking, and again 20% bonus to damage. At the first glance, uh, it might look uh, like it's uh, similar to Firetail, but it's not really uh, the case, uh, because if you look at his, well, slot layout, you will see that it's uh, three mat slots and four lows. Uh, usually it means that it is an uh, armor tanking ship, and uh, mids are used um, to fit a, a propulsion mod, tackling mod like Scram or Disruptor, and a web. Uh, though uh, it's not unheard of to fit uh, dual rep setups uh, and dedicate uh, third mid slots to a small capacitor booster. It's possible, but not often used. And uh, one of the, the advantages of this ship is that it has drones. Uh, well, as almost any Galenta ship, it has, a, a, I would say it has a pretty nice um, drone bay, uh, which can fit six drones, uh, two packs of three drones, because you can field only three light drones in it. 
but still, six drones is very nice. And, and I would say that if you are fighting a Navy Comet, uh, don't try to kill its drones, because it will have a lot of spare, and in the meantime, it will uh, kill you pretty fast with its DPS. So, uh, you have three drones that do a nice DPS, and you have... Uh, well, many calendar ships are famous for its uh, on-paper DPS. Uh, I would say that uh, Navy Comet is, uh, well, uh, one of a uh, very good ship in ships in DPS uh, numbers between Galante. Uh, so I've linked, uh, not linked, but in Google Doc you can find the fit. And, well, let's do another small contest. Um, first person who will tell me or the closest amount of DPS it, this fit can put out with all level 5 skills will get a Navy Comet right away and go. Uh, I would say guns overheated and probably I must say that with Caldari Navy uh, which is a uh, usual uh, choice Caldari Navy ammo ok uh, that's enough my P5 shows that with overheated guns, uh, it's at all level 5 scales, it gives 294. And the person that was closest is Kermit, and he wins a Navy Comet. Yes, and as Nair uh, correctly pointed out, that's a shitload of DPS. Uh, drones do uh, around 60 DPS, everything else is from blasters, and if you load uh, short-range uh, high DPS T2 ammo, uh, which is void, you will get uh, more than 300 DPS overall. But uh, it's kind of, well, you need to know what are you doing to uh, fit void in Federation Navy Comet. It has a nice tracking. Uh, bonuses, so void is an option, I would say, but you need to uh, be careful about your angular velocity and know how to reduce it, in case if you are seeing that you are not uh, hitting very well with your blasters. Okay, uh, so as you can understand, Navy Comet is the highest DPS boat uh, between all frigates, and it's one of its main strength. Uh, another a big advantage, I would say, is that Comet can field drones, and um, as you know, blasters do only thermal and kinetic damage, but uh, with drones you can, um, well, use, for example, warrior twos, uh, warriors, and deal explosive damage, uh, which is often very, very nice uh, against um, targets. Uh, so against armor tanked T1 targets. Uh, so for example you can for example uh, <laughs> have three uh, warriors and three hobgoblins and depending on the enemy you can uh, choose which one to field in a particular combat which is again very very convenient. Now uh, let's get a little uh, on this setup um, so in high slots it's uh, two uh, high caliber blasters and a NOS uh, to support your armor wrapper and blasters. Uh, in mid slots it's uh, classical afterburner, scrambler and stasis uh, web. In lows uh, damage control, armor wrapper, adaptive nanoplating and uh, max step to increase your damage and in the rigs we have anti-explosive one which will uh, close our explosive hole damage, again damage rig, well because uh, as you can understand uh, Comet is all about damage and a trimer rig. Uh, to be honest I'm not sure that it's a trimer trimer rig is the best choice just a second Yes, I would say that probably it's the best choice and uh, fitting a uh, rig that will increase your repair rate uh, it's, uh, would not be that good of uh, idea, at least in this case. Of course you can uh, somewhat uh, 
change this fit. For example, you can try and fit uh, two max tabs, or uh, there is a pretty popular fit with an energized, energized adaptive nano uh, membrane, which will allow you to have a lot, uh, a lot better tank. Well, because you will have uh, better resists but you will have to sacrifice um, guns, you will have to fit a uh, smaller caliber, and you will have some problems with uh, modules, and you'll have to fit meta ones, not T2, uh, because as you can see with this fit, it's, well, totally T2 fit, which is kind of nice uh, and easy. Uh, so there is some room for improvement, but uh, I will probably I'll let you uh, decide it for yourself. How do you, how do you want to improve it? I would probably say that um, Federation Navy Comet is one of the ships that are pretty easy to fit in a good way. Also, there are some uh, popular railgun fits, which uh, use 125 millimeter railguns, uh, and the fit is almost almost date identical to the one that I've linked. Instead, it will have uh, rails and will not have a nose. Railfit has its own advantages, like a longer range, of course, but and p there are people that fly it. Both fits are pretty effective. Um, of course, rail one has uh, smaller DPS numbers, but it's pretty good too, I would say. I will add that all fits that uh, are on this page are uh, well, more or less low sec oriented, but to make them uh, zero zero fits, usually you'll need to upgrade Afterburner to the MVD, and it can be done with installing one ancillary uh, power grid rig, which is small ancillary current rotor. Uh, so in this case, you'll drop, uh, well, I don't know. Probably you will drop, for example, on Comet Trimark and put an MVD in the mid slot instead of Afterburner. But it's basically up to you. Uh, Nair asks, if you want to escape, how likely are you to get a jam in time with three same drones? Oh, I wouldn't. I would say that not very likely, <laughs> uh, because uh, with. Uh, time that ECM needs to recharge. If you were unsuccessful, you will probably be dead. But as a way of escape, there are people that uh, field ECM drones. Uh, for three ECM drones, I would not do it. For example, for five, it's, uh, uh, well, chances are almost doubled, and it becomes more viable option. But I would say that you need to deploy them from the very beginning of the fight uh, if you want to increase your chances of uh, getting out. So if you are able to, for example, um, ECM your target with your three drones uh, at the beginning of the fight, it means that you will control the fight uh, at least for the next 30 seconds, because he will, uh, after he will get uh, his jam cycle ended, he will still need to first lock you, second, uh, put uh, all his mod modules on you, and third, he will need to get uh, again on his preferred range. And if you are, uh, have, if you have Scrum and Web on him, it will take uh, some time, so I would say 30, 35 seconds of the fight will be yours, totally yours. But, uh, of course, it will come at a price of lowered DPS. Nier asks, with just light combat drones, have goblins, warriors, or a flight of each? I would say flight uh, of, uh, well, three, uh, not a full flight of each, three warriors, three hobgoblins. Okay, uh, so if you have any questions regarding uh, Navy Comet, drop them into the uh, chat channel now. I like, uh, Holly asks, I like all in burn DPS ships. Is the Comet the best choice between Navy Frig or there is a suicide fit you didn't show cause it too much insane? Uh, well, 
uh, there are of course suicide fits for example you can switch uh, your damage control uh, for uh, another magnetic stabilizer it will give you even more DPS and switch to void ammo and use hobgoblins at the most high DPS uh, drones in this case I would say that you will have uh, DPS around 330 or 340 even uh, and with some cheap implants uh, you can get probably up to 360 DPS but uh, well probably you will die fast because a lot of the Galenta ship tank uh, goes to its hull and without the damage control uh, your hull resistance will be well zero if you want to <laughs> have a really high DPS I would say that you would either want to go to Enyo which is Galente Assault Freak or uh, to Daredevil uh, which is uh, pirate faction frigs that use blasters both of them have very high DPS val values I would say that Daredevil can reach out to 400 and if we will get an uh, Assault Frigate uh, buff uh, as it's supposed to be on uh, end of January uh, Enyo will be probably the next king of the frigates with its extreme DPS and three mid, sl mid slots well Harpy is nice too uh, especially uh, after the uh, buff to blasters uh, and uh, feel free to fly it it's not a problem um, but yes uh, generally in the end I wanted to say that uh, as some of you probably know there is a plan from CCP to uh, boost uh, the assault frigates usually they are giving them um, one more slot uh, mid or low or uh, for vengeance for example it's a high slot uh, they boost somewhat its CPU and power grid uh, they what's probably one of the most important thing they are giving a fourth bonus uh, it's usually uh, well either damage or tracking or something like that and uh, they sometimes for some ships they increase HP of the ship so um, a lot of ships will be just uh, a lot of assault frigates uh, will be be boosted pretty significantly and um, I would say that uh, you will want to fly them and uh, if now Navy frigates are um, well more or less equal to assault frigates uh, and it comes down to pilot uh, pilot experience and uh, fittings that you are using uh, after the um, buff uh, assault frigates, many assault frigates will become a lot stronger and you might have uh, problems uh, fighting them uh, for example uh, well retribution will become uh, at least somewhat viable for PvP it will have second mid slot um, vengeance will get uh, basically NOS, additional NOS since now it cannot fit one uh, Minmatar ships will uh, get uh, tracking bonuses uh, which will mean that uh, it won't be a possibility anymore to get under the guns of the Wolf for example as it is often um, done now and uh, I think Harpy will get a fifth mid slot if I'm not mistaken uh, which means that which uh, yeah uh, thanks for the link um, oh Harpy will get a low float and a shield boost um, well probably Harpy will be crazy on DPS uh, but not that not as crazy as an Enyo and I would say that Hawk will be very good and because it will have uh, five mid slots and will be able to copy um, a lot of hook bill fits uh, so but anyway um, 
Navy frigates will have its uh, their unique bonuses, at least some of them, like Navy Slicer, for example, and you will be able to still fly them. And in the end, if you have uh, frigates five, you uh, can easily train up to assault frigates. And uh, also, probably regarding your questions, ever I would say that uh, Harpy is nice, but uh, and since it's all, uh, a um, blaster boat too, well, at least hybrid uh, boat too, uh, but it has problem with DPS, as you can understand. Uh, bonuses on Enyo are, I think, uh, bigger, but after the buff. Um, Probably. Oh no, its uh, bonuses are the same, but tracking is better. But probably after the buff, uh, Harpy will be pretty nice too. So, any more questions regarding the IFs? Uh, um, well, I finished the uh, main class material, so feel free to ask on voice if you need to, or in uh, class.uni. Oh, and before uh, any questions, uh, how many people are in Aldrat and willing to have a, sp a quick sparring session after the class? Please exab, and preferably with your ship. Oh, great, we have a nice uh, amount of people and a nice amount of uh, Navy frigates. Okay, uh, so uh, people that will want to spar uh, get to Aldrat at planet 8. Uh, but f well, and prepare your ships. But for now, uh, please um, ask questions if you have any. Uh, sparring people, uh, we are not going to blow anyone's ship uh, up. It's we will just try to get to hull and then stop shooting. Uh, Jesse um, asks, I have a question. Please, is the retribution useful for anything? Um, for PvE it's great for level 3 missions, uh, for now at least, and for PvP it's uh, usually a sniping boat, but it has uh, of course only one mid slot, so it cannot tackle, and for solo PvP it's useless, for now, but if the um, uh, Crucible 1-1 one -one will have uh, Assault Frigate uh, boosts, then Retribution will have two mid slots, and it will also have, I think, a tracking bonus, uh, more armor HP. So it will become a viable P solo PvP boat. So uh, it's up to you. And it will be, well, much better than it is now. But um, if you try to EFT a little, uh, you can make a very good, uh, well, mm, pretty decent uh, sniper out of uh, Imperial Navy Slicer because it's uh, it has a range bonus. Ever uh, Shade asks any reason you didn't say anything about uh, the two XTD hook bill? Um, yes, there are basically basically two reasons uh, because um, fits that I've linked are well mostly uh, basic the most basic ones, and the second reason is because. Um, Uni is an RDS. Uh, 2TD hookbill is great, but usually it's great for uh, when you can engage enemy uh, first.